Hello there, mathematicians. Today's objective is students will be able to solve two-step word problems. And we should write two-step equation word problems. Okay. All right, anytime. Any, any time we see word problems, we know to use cups. And you guys, again, this is not just something that we make you do just to punish you. Like, this helps you out. This helps you avoid silly mistakes that a lot of you are continuing to make because you don't read carefully. Okay? All right. I want everyone to use cups on example one. So hit pause now. Use cups on example one. Okay, so Kelly ordered 32 t-shirts. You're checking your cups with mine. Well, right when I read that, I just write out 32 at 580 a piece. But she also had to pay an order placement fee of $6. How much did the total order cost? <clears throat> That's what we're trying to find out, the total order cost. Well, let me ask you this. What all are you paying for? There are two things that you're paying for. What are they? You should have said that you're paying for one thing is just the t-shirts. Okay? You're also paying a fee. Those are the two things that you're paying for. Now, to figure out the total, any time that you're paying for more than one thing, you simply add up the things that you're paying for. Well, what are we paying for t-shirts? Well, any time you are buying a bunch of something, you simply multiply how many you buy times what? Times the price. That's it. So for t-shirts, we ordered 32 t-shirts, or Kelly did, times, well, how much did each single t-shirt cost? $5.80. Okay. And then we have to add in the fee. Now, was this fee, was it $6 for each and every t-shirt, or was it just $6 that we had to pay at the end for everything? Okay, and the way it reads is we just had to pay a one-time order placement fee of six bucks. Okay. All right, so the 32 shirts times the $5.80 a shirt. Um, the shirts alone would cost $185.60. Plus that $6 fee brings us to a total. Okay, for this order would be... One hundred and ninety-one dollars and sixty cents. Make sure you include the money symbol. Okay. If you have any questions on that, make sure that you make a note and a very specific question. That way, you can ask when we get to class. Okay. Let's go on to the next. All right. Use cups on example two. Okay. Use cups on example number two. All right. Think about this. What is the difference? between this problem and the previous one. What is the main difference? Okay. You should have said, this fee, this charge, it is no longer for your entire order, right? It's not 50 cents for your entire order, it's 50 cents for each ticket, so for each item, okay? So there are basically two ways that we can do this. We can say, oh, the tickets, we're $6.25 a piece. We bought seven of them. So you do the cost times how many you bought. Now, we're paying a fee. So we have to, we're paying more. So we gotta add more. Well, what are we paying? We're paying 50 cents, okay? For how many tickets? For seven tickets. So again, what this is saying is, oh, you bought seven tickets, originally $6.25 a piece. But you also have to pay more, and you have to pay 50 cents per ticket more. Okay? When you do that, you get the total of, let's see, I believe it's $47.25, I believe. Okay. Now, there's another way of doing this. You could have said, well, you're not actually paying $6.25 anymore per ticket. You're actually paying $6.25 plus that 50 cents per ticket. So you could have simply said, and again, this is note, so let's get this down, 625 plus the 50 cents. 
So you're actually paying $6.75 per ticket, and we bought seven tickets. Okay? And you would get the same thing. Okay? So get both of these methods down. And I apologize for my handwriting. I don't have my stylus pen, so I'm using my finger. All right, go on to example three. Use cups. Go. Hit pause and do it. Try it on your own first. Get started. Okay, so I use cups on example three. Jen's buying some candy to sell the football game. Okay, so here's a key. If she buys over 20 boxes, she's going to get a discount of $3 off her total purchase. Okay, she bought 26 boxes. Does she get the discount? Does she get the discount? And the answer is yes. She bought over 20 boxes, okay? So, she bought 26 boxes. So we take the number of boxes that she bought and times it by the cost for each box. Okay. Now, here's the key. Some of you may have thought, oh, you need to subtract the $3 from the $6.75. But you don't. It's not $3 off of each box. Again, it is not. $3 off of each box. It is $3 off of her total purchase. So once you purchase these, then at the end you take that $3 off. Okay, so when you do the 26 uh, boxes times the $6.75 per box, you get $175.50. And then you subtract the $3. And we get an answer of, and again this is money, make sure you include the units, one hundred and seventy two dollars and fifty cents Okay. alright let's read this next part for example three how would the answer change so that's our question if uh, the problem said she would receive three dollars off each box for selling over twenty that is the key that's the difference okay it's off of each box so we can think about it this way. How much did each box actually cost now that she got the discount off of each box? Well, so we're still ordering 26. Okay, now each box, it's not 675 anymore. It's that $6.75 minus the $3 off each box. Okay, so each box will actually cost three dollars and seventy five cents okay. when you do that you get an answer of ninety seven dollars and fifty cents okay that's your answer for that one now I want to show you another way of doing this okay you could have said oh well what if they had to pay full price it would be twenty six times the six point seven five so again, that's if they had to pay the full price. Shrink this down a little bit. Okay, go ahead and use cups for example number four. When you're done with that, and start thinking about how you would set that up. Okay, with example number four. There is something extremely important that we actually have not talked about yet. It's a new concept for us. This word profit. This word profit is a word that we have not learned yet. Okay, but it's a really important business word that obviously if you're in business, you want to make a profit. You want to make money. Okay. Now, if you think about think about the corner store next door to the school. If they are selling a bunch of stuff to you guys after school. They're bringing in money, right? But do, is that, would we say that that's money that they made, that they made all that money? So if they brought in $100 from students one day after school, okay, do they just get to take that home? Is that theirs free and clear? The answer should be no because they have to pay for things. Right? Like if um, they're selling the Gatorade to you for $2, was that Gatorade free for them? The answer is no. They had to pay for that Gatorade. Okay? Same with the lights. They have to pay the light bill, the heating. They have to pay the heat bill. They have to pay the person to uh, sell the items to you. 
Okay, so profit. Anytime you see the word profit, we have to think about it this way. Profit is this. Okay, put this down with me. Profit is equal to. Okay, we call it, I'll give you the word and then I'll explain it. We call it revenue minus expenses. And you should be able to write a little bit smaller than I am. Okay. Now revenue is simply this. Revenue is simply the money we bring in. Okay, so it, like if you sell a Gatorade for two bucks, that's the revenue. You bring in two bucks. If you sell um, you know, a banana for a buck, you bring in that dollar. Now expenses are simply costs are things that we have to pay out. Okay. All right, now, for this example, um, each pitcher of lemonade we're selling for $3. Okay. So, to figure out how much money he made, we simply have to do, well, profit is equal to, so let's just write P is equal to, doing $3 times however many pitchers of lemonade I sold. Okay. Well, he sold 20 pitchers. Okay. So, we could say that Eric's revenue was $60. That's how much money he brought in off of selling lemonade. Okay. Now, did he have to pay any expenses? And if we look at this question, it's very clear. There is a setup cost. That means he had to pay money for buying all of the supplies. Okay. What do we do with that setup cost? We have to subtract it because it's an expense. It's a cost. So we would subtract a buck ten. When we do that, we get that Eric's profit. Eric's profit was that would be fifty-eight dollars and ninety cents. Okay. So the key point to remember on this is profit. Is simply you take the money that you bring in, all the money that you bring in from selling items, and you subtract any of the money that you had to pay out pay for employees, to pay for lights, to pay, pay for the actual food or whatever you're selling in the first place. Okay, so our profit was $58.90. If you have any specific questions, make sure you write those down now. Okay, the last example that we're going to do is this one. This one's a little bit tricky, so I want to go over it. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause and use cups on this problem now. Okay, so I'm going to model cups for you guys. So Mr. Irwin bought eight six packs of soda. So right away I'm thinking, well, how many cans of soda did I actually buy? And if you have eight six packs, okay, you would simply do the eight times the six. So I bought 48 total cans of soda. So again, as I'm going through this, I just do that now. Okay, he wants to make sure that every one of his 32 guests gets the same amount of soda. Okay, so the question is, how many should he give each guest? Now, to do that, we just take the total. So again, we have the total, get this in words first, divided by the number of guests. Okay, so the total was 48. And when you divide that by 32 guests, you get 1.5. Now, I want you thinking about this. Is this your answer? Think yes or no and why. So hit pause and think about this in a minute. Is this your answer? Okay. Now, you should have told yourself, these are cans of soda, right? And I'm throwing a big party. Am I really going to take a can of soda and cut it in half and give each guest 1.5 cans? And you should say, no, that's insane. Okay. Now. The common mistake is to do this, to say, oh, 1.5, okay, well, I got to round because I can't do a half of a soda. So I'm just going to round to the nearest whole soda. When I do that, I would get, underline the place value joiner next door. Five is bigger than four, so I would add one more. So I see a lot of this answer, two cans. Okay. Let's check that quick. Let's check it. So I had 32 guests, right? 32 guests. And if they each get two cans, that would be 64 cans that I gave out. Do I have 64 cans to give out? The answer is no, I only have 48. Okay. 
So we can't just round up on this. We can't just use math to round. We have to think real life. I would have to simply round down to say, well, I can only give each guest one can. Because again, if I give them two, I gave out 64 cans. Okay, get that down and cross it out because that is the common wrong answer. So how many cans would I give each guest? The answer would be one can. Okay, again, if you have a specific question, make sure you write it down. All right, are there any cans of soda left over? Okay. Well, how many guests came? 32. How many did each guest get? One. So how many total cans did I give out? I gave out 32 cans. Okay. How many did I start off with? Well, I had 48 to start off with. So I had 48 cans. I gave out, so I subtracted. I need to subtract. Again, subtract the number that you actually give out. And when you do that, you get 16 cans left. Okay. Now, I want you to explain how you know that. So explain why we did 32 times 1 and why we subtracted that from 48. Okay, do that before you come to class.